So as you know by now, Nuke is not an image, a, a movie editor, it is a, a movie compositor. That is to say, it places movies or image sequences on top of each other and not next to each other. It does not specialize in merging them within or into each other, but on, on top. However, in order to do so, it must still be able to deal with some kind of time manipulation um, instances. It must be able to speed up clips, slow them down, and must be able to feed them into each other. And indeed, it can. It can't do it as slickly as something like Final Cut Pro. It's not as easy to use as Final Cut Pro, but nonetheless it can edit an image. It can pr produce cuts and such like. But first things first is when you're dealing with an image sequence in, or when you're dealing with a movie in a professional compositing application, I would absolutely suggest that you deal with an image sequence like that which I have here. 300 still frames one after the other. Do not try and work with QuickTime movies. Now, although Nuke will accept a QuickTime movie, it is not the professional's way of doing things. You cannot play around with the timing as efficiently as you can with an image sequence. Uh, a QuickTime movie has many disadvantages. So if you find yourself with one, you export as an image sequence, okay, using QuickTime Pro, or indeed dragging it into Nuke and just writing out an image sequence from there. Okay, so once you've brought in your image sequence, let's just do that. What we do is to bring in the folder like that, and it'll read in that way, okay. Once you've got your image sequence, uh, what can you do with it? Well, we have these values here, editable values evidently, and these pull down menus here, and this box here. Let's just go through what they all mean. Right, when we come up to our, we've got 300 frames, when we come up to our 300th, what happens? It freezes. That's what that pull-down menu denotes. Let's go into there. We've got hold, loop, bounce, and black. Now bounce will... Uh, the image sequence begins like that. And if we set that end to bounce, let's say set it to loop, that image sequence will start again endlessly, okay? If we set it to something like bounce, once it reaches the end, it'll play backwards. And that's quite that's quite a nice transition for, say you've got a little uh, effect, a clip effect or something like a, a fire or smoke, maybe not smoke, but certainly fire, you can make the fire look like it's lasting longer than it is just by bouncing it back and forwards. Or indeed you could set it to black which is quite convenient and it's what I'm going to do now. Okay, now, so, so what do these values do? Well, that I'm going to do, I'm just going to enter into them 100 and 200. Okay, now what I've done, let's just pull this back from 100 so we can see the range. Our clip was here and the name of our clip was clip one prosaic and was 300 frames long and I took a point from 300 I beg your pardon from 100 and 200 okay and by moving that point moving the end point to 200 I've just cut it off at that point, okay? So I've just shortened the amount of frames. I haven't moved the clip, I've just trimmed it. And it can be quite useful.
okay now but what if I want to move it that way what do I do let's set that back to default what it was at least now what this box does frame it asks whatever frame I'm at what frame should I be reading so given that we've got one to three hundred here this is three hundred long this happens to be three hundred point frame there that's one there now let's say we want to move it forward fifty that's still three hundred this is obviously three hundred and fifty Obviously, mm, 50. So let's say I'm at 250. So here's the frame I'm at. Where should I be reading? I should be reading 250 minus 50. So that's where I should be. Okay. So um, it's 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 determining the point of 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 read if you see what I mean so in order to move it move the frame this direction we need to put in frame minus 50 okay now let's just watch that at work shall we let's go to 150 exactly now I'm going to put a region of interest there so only only the bit within the region of interest will update I'm going to move forward to 200 and I'm going to tell it to read 50 back so there we go that's kind of proof if you like it's this sequence here which is the only live sequence all of this has been frozen okay let's unfreeze that let's do that again frame minus 50 okay okay so that's um, that's that so that so there's quite a lot of power within within the read nodes okay and um, Let's move on now to some of the tools, some of the nodes that can manipulate time.